Hey there, it's Amy, and in today's video, we are going to look at January and my 2024 Hobonichi cousin. I spent the majority of February doing a lot of back journaling for January because it was a pretty busy month, uh, which is why this video is coming at you a little bit later than typical for flip throughs, but it's the internet time doesn't exist anyway. I've been having a lot of fun in my Hobonichi documenting big things, little things, bad things, happy things. I feel like Dr. Seuss. So let's take a look. First up, we have the period tracker. This has been so helpful. I like to keep track of like what's happening down there because I'm in my early thirties and things are changing. You know, they don't really tell you that, or at least somebody told me that. On the year at a glance pages, I use it as a workout tracker. My gym is like a group fitness hit gym, high intensity interval training is what I think that stands for. I don't actually know. And I love it there. This will be, I'm coming into my third year at the gym and it took me like a year and a half to really like it. And now I'm just obsessed with it. And I'm a person that has been in a bigger body for many, many years. And I'm a person who has had chronic pain. And for the first bit at the gym, it was really hard and things hurt and I struggled, but I stayed. Why am I telling you this? I'm just trying to say like, it is shocking that people are right and that things get easier with time. I guess is all I'm trying to say. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn, but my pain is super manageable now because I've strengthened the parts of my body that hurt. I don't go to the gym to change the way my body looks. I go to, to the gym to change the way my mind works and how I feel and how I sleep and how I react to things that I hate, all of that. So why am I telling you this? I guess I'm telling you this because my goal this year is to go to 12 classes a month. One, because that's what I pay for. Two, if you do 12 classes a month, they enter you in what is called committed club. And at the end of the year, you get a t-shirt. I'll do anything for a t-shirt, like anything. I'll do a lot of things for a t-shirt. So I'm excited to continue doing that. I do notice on the February side, I need to fill in some days. I know what you, I know you're counting and you're like, girl, you're not gonna make it. I just haven't filled in some of the days. So I do feel the need to say that. So anyway, let me just explain this really quickly. I shoot for three days a week at the gym. I really like tracking it in this way because I'm dedicating a color to a week. It's arbitrary. There is no meaning behind why the first week is blue. It's just honestly the first one I grabbed. I am highlighting the day that I went and because my gym is class-based, not like that. <laughs> Not like that. Because my gym is group fitness, there are classes and class times. And I wanted to track when I was able, like what class I was able to go to. So I am dedicating a color to the week, filling that in, telling what time I went. And if I'm having like kind of large absences from the gym, I do make a quick note about why I wasn't there. So I was out of town for four days at the end of January. I just put a little note there. And then in the bottom section, I am using it as like the notes section. I'm writing in things that I'm noticing and also this year at the gym, they have implemented like monthly challenges. And so at the bottom, I'm writing in what the challenge is. So for the month of January, the challenge was one minute squat holds. I urge you just for fun and a little bit of misery to pause the video here, get out your phone, set a timer for one minute and try to hold a squat for the minute. It is as close to meditation I'll ever get. It is a lot of bargaining. It's a lot of pleading. It's a lot of begging with somebody. I don't know. It was my goal to rip, to hold for that full minute the whole time. And I did. So in the notes, I just made a quick one that says, you know, I held the one minute squat hold all month. And then I make a note here that going to the gym is the easiest it's ever been. Something has clicked in for me. I'm able to prioritize it in a way that I have not been able to for the past couple of years. So it was very cool. In the January monthly spreads, I do like a thought a day or just a quick jotting something down. I did it all through last year and I really liked it because sometimes there are just like mundane things happening that I don't want to dedicate a whole spread to on the daily section or even a bit in the weeklies. Sometimes I just want to capture a mood. Sometimes I want to capture a very specific memory and it's been really fun. So this is all filled in. I accidentally started filling in February. <laughs> 
<laughs> even though I had already, spoiler alert, done it over here. So it's just like, I have to write myself a note like, oh, LOL, I messed up. Yeah, just little bits here. Like, you know, I had a good planning and relaxing day. I took my parents out to dinner. Dad was an iPad kid. He, I let him use my phone to watch the football game during dinner. It was just very funny. It was my dad on my phone. And then my smallest nephew had his mom's phone. So my middle nephew and me are just like, well, both of our phones are taken. Like, what are we supposed to do? We were playing rock, paper, scissors. We were playing I Spy. It was so fun. The despair of a poor 33 year old trying to YouTube is hilarious. I had filmed something this day and it it was so hard. <laughs> I think it was my 2023 flip through. I had, I it was just like, I almost didn't survive it. And I, I need to say that. I really like these. It's, it's just nice to see it all in one place. January 8th, why do I keep running into people tangentially related to boys of my past? Something's in the universe, something was happening. I'm running into a lot of like brothers of people I used to date or wives of people I used to be in love with. Really strange. But yeah, I wouldn't have dedicated a whole page to that, but I love having like a little snippet there. Moving on to the weeklies. If you watched my 2023 flip through, you know that I largely abandoned the weeklies towards the end of the year. I don't take this with me to work. I have a Hobonichi Weeks that I use as my work planner, so I don't need this with me to like track my meetings or my daily to-do lists. Uh, and I was repeating myself a lot for no real reason. You know, I'm like back journaling the weeklies just to have the pages filled in. And I thought that was really silly. So for the first couple weeks, I started doing a report. And if you're not on TikTok <laughs> or don't pay much attention to trends in that way, a report is something that popped up last year or maybe the year before. It stands for reading, eating, playing, obsessed, recommending, and treat or treating. And I love seeing what people are reporting because I I find a lot of like new things that way. And so for the first couple of weeks, I was doing a report. So I was telling you what I was reading and eating. So here I was reading uh, my book club book, The House of Eve, Snowed In by Katherine Walsh, which was a buddy read with my girlfriend. I was listening to The Astonishing Life of August March by Aaron Jackson. Highly recommend that book on audio by the way, it's, it's so good. Eating New Year's Day food, frozen pizzas. Oh, I made this chicken and broccoli thing. I totally forgot about that. It was pretty good. I should try it again. I was considering finishing my Hobonichi from 2023 playing because I had the best time doing it. I was obsessed with my neon Posca pens and book vlogs. This is the year that I have started watching book vlogs and they are all done by these like gorgeous 20 year olds who like live with their parents and I'm obsessed with them. They are my children. They are my family. I cannot get enough of these girls. I'm rooting for them. I'm laughing with them. I'm one made me cry the other day because she's kind of having a hard time. I left a YouTube comment. I mean, it was like dark. Um, but I'm loving them. So I, you know, writing that down as what I'm obsessed with. I'm recommending a ruthless closet clean out. I cannot recommend it enough, except for maybe like put a day between, well, maybe not, I don't know. I got rid of a lot of things. I donated a lot of things. I did a clothing swap with friends and, you know, getting dressed now is tough <laughs> because I got rid of so many things. But anyway, I loved it. I highly recommend it. And my treat is ice cold Diet Coke in cans. So I did a report for a couple weeks and, you know, sometimes it was like kind of all over the place and sometimes it was a little bit more organized and, and word heavy. And then I got bored. One, because I eat the same thing pretty much every week. We go to the same like three restaurants. We have a decent amount of McDonald's. I'm not afraid to tell you that. I'm a little ashamed to tell you, but I'm not afraid to tell you. And like frozen pizza and our Wednesday night date spot. Like, and I got tired of writing that all over again. So I sort of abandoned it and I switched gears. This is heavily inspired by Kayla. I will give you her Instagram over here somewhere or maybe over here. I can't remember where there's enough distance to do that. Somewhere over here, I'll give you her Instagram. She does these really cool weekly collages. She prints off a lot of stuff, you know, pastes it in there and it looks incredible and I love it. And I realize there are a lot of things that happen in a day that I don't necessarily want to dedicate to it, like a full page of my dailies to. So instead I am kind of giving you the highlights here. Like for instance, I probably for January 17th would not do an Emmy dedicated page because I don't 
care that much. But I am proud that the Bear won so much stuff, that IOA Debris won so much stuff, Quinta Brunson. Like, I did want to do something with that information, but didn't want to dedicate a whole page. So this is kind of where that came into play. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Sometimes they're stickers, sometimes they're little illustrations. I think uh, overall, it probably looks a little chaotic, but that's okay. I think that's me overall, a little chaotic. Something I did here that I didn't do the week before, I just gave you kind of like good bits of the week and maybe not so good bits of the week. I felt restless. This project that I'm working on is taking a little too long, but I got a lot of reading done and I got to see some friends at conferences that I don't get to see that often. And though the project's taking a really long time, they look fantastic and I can't be mad about that. And then they get a little... <laughs> A little bit more explosion-y of color. I'm just having a lot of fun with these. And I think you can tell. I hope you can tell. So this bleeds into February a little bit. But I'm seeing I forgot to outline my pencil. You know what? It, can I do it now? Do you care? Okay. Okay. It makes me feel better. You can see I, I do a lot of pencil planning first because if I don't, you'll see later what happens. Spacing gets out of control. I've always been that way uh, on the pottery projects that I do. I'm doing pencil first. Pencil burns away in the kiln. So I'm used to like not having to erase it, if I'm being honest with you. And I don't prioritize erasing it in here. I should probably do that, but I also, it doesn't bother me. All right, so now to get into the good stuff. Here are the dailies. Again, I fully intend to write myself a letter. Actually, I think I intended to write myself a letter here. I didn't do it. I think there's always still time for that, right? What, what do y'all do on these turning the page to a new year? Please tell me in the comments what you do because maybe I just need some inspiration. I also wanna know what you do on these pages, the month pages, because I largely ignore them. I do like when people put photos there or when they do like highlights of the month, but I think because I'm doing so many photos in here and so many highlights elsewhere in the book that I don't, it, it just feels like repetition. So I just kind of ignore those pages. Should I do like a mood board? My book girlies are doing that and I think it's cute. I don't know, give me some inspiration. So on January 1st, in the it's a Southern tradition to have black eyed peas, collard greens, cornbread, some sort of pork, like a ham hock in the black eyed peas. It's a non-negotiable for me. I have to have it every year. I've had it every year since I was a kid. You're also not supposed to do laundry that day. You're not supposed to sweep. You gotta open up the door at midnight to let the old year out and the new year in. There's a lot of you know superstitious -y things that I love to do around the new year. They all have meaning. Is it all also doesn't hurt that it's delicious. So I cooked the annual, you know, black eyed peas, collard greens, cornbread. Collard greens symbolize money and black eyed peas means coins and just kind of like good luck in general. Your cornbread is gonna be gold. Every A lot of things money based, but it, I mean, it also means luck and prosperity and things like that. So it's, it's not, all about, not all about the money, DI, but a lot of it is. So I illustrated my meal and told you what each food means. And then in the background, I've sort of done a sloppy, like these are the things Things that I want for the year. I find it's too much pressure if I were to sit down and be like, here's a bulleted list of the, the ways I would love to completely 180 my personality this year. And I've learned after 33 attempts, well, I guess I wasn't doing resolutions when I was a baby. Let's say after like 20 attempts to fully change my entire personality, that it it ain't gonna happen. So I'm giving myself kind of loose things back here. And I, lo I love filling up the page in the background with like sloppy writing. It almost acts as like a pattern. I want to save more money. Obviously, I want to cook more. Um, I want to get committed club. I want to do something... I don't know what that says. I want to start a YouTube channel. I did that. Um, I want a better schedule so things aren't so out of control. <sighs> I want to see my family more. I want to take a vacation. Amen. I want to throw more dinner parties. I want to stay happy. Pretty good. 
Next up, we have just what I really like to do, which are just illustrating bits about my day. So I have a subscription service for paint your own pottery stores. If you know a paint your own pottery shop and you want them to be better, you just send them my way and they can subscribe to my subscription service and I'll give them a project every month that's trendy and cute and so fun. I'm really bad about talking about it for some reason. I'm trying to get better. I got COVID at the end of last year. It was actually brutal. It was my third time with COVID, second Christmas in a row with it. And this time, the strain was like, I don't know, it was extra tough. So I was officially COVID free, thank God. And I did my first workout of the year and I really didn't want to go because I still wasn't feeling that great. Because of what was happening on the next day, I needed to go get that first kind of bad one out of the way. So I did that. And I also, oh, I was like, what happened here? And then, okay, I back journaled a lot in my Hobonichi on that day and I was having so much fun. And what I really like about this page, it like exists. <laughs> I feel like this, this is the kind of stuff that like absolutely is the reason why I do this. Like these jokes within a jokes, these like meta things. It's just so fun for me. And if it's not fun for me, then like, why am I doing it? You know? So I like to make things fun for me. The next day was my member of the month workout. I will eventually stop talking about the gym. I promise. Every month my gym picks a member and they highlight them and they say a lot of nice things about them. They do like a little blog post um, with like a little interview in it. And they spend all month kind of like hyping you up, which is like, as a person who loves attention, but likes to control the attention, it was very like having strangers come up to you and be like, oh my God, you're member of the month and being like, yeah, like it was so fun, but like a little overwhelming, but I loved it, but it was a little overwhelming. And you also get to design a workout, which really was me just telling the lady that designs the workouts. <laughs> here's a list of the things that I hate doing. Please don't make me do these things. And here's a format that I don't hate. I was member of the month in December. And because December is such a crazy month, they moved my workout to January, the first week in January. So because I do ceramics, they called it the pottery wheel. The wheel is a format where you kind of move around the gym in groups. Um, and I love it because I think, I think because you have to do so much moving around, it takes your mind off how miserable the actual workout is. That's my guess anyway. It was great. Like I, I have just some notes here about it. When I first saw it, I was not excited about it at all. Um, but it ended up being really fun. And Ronell, who is the main coach for the class times that I go to, he was out sick. So I was a little bit bummed I didn't get to have that with him but I did get Brian who is the next best thing also he's so attractive it's like sometimes it's like hard to look at this man because he's so attractive and he used to do like football or something and so sometimes we'll do these like football moves <sighs> he's married beautiful wife beautiful child I promise like I'm not coming on to him at the gym, but like a girl can look, you know? So it was amazing to have him there and they've all found my Instagram. And so a lot of times when he sees me, he goes, Amy y'all, which is embarrassing and also very cute. At the end of every class, we clap together. I it sounds like I'm in a cult. I'm not, I promise. We clap together and we like say a thing and you know, sometimes it's like stronger or hump day. Rennell likes to say that a lot, which I'm always like, why are we doing this? But on that day during clap up at the end of it, Brian had everybody say Amy y'all and it was horrifying, but I loved it. I made a little pocket and I wanted to remember during clap up, Brian had everyone say Amy y'all. It was sweet and embarrassing. If you follow me on Instagram, you may know that I do record a lot of my workouts and a lot of it is because I'm proud of myself. And a lot of it too is because I perform incredibly for a camera. And sometimes when I feel like someone's looking, AKA my phone camera, I will do like a more reps or a higher weight or something like that. It is mentally unwell up here, but it worked. I happen to have my camera rolling for, for that bit. So I got, you get to see me sort of like embarrassingly clap along with everyone. And I, I like that as a little surprise back here. I love doing little pockets. And then I, I, I just said, Brian, can we take a selfie? Like a little fan girl. Anyway. Next up, my girlfriend and I went to Barnes and Noble. We love going to Barnes and Noble together. It's 
I mean, is there a better date? I don't think there is, to be honest with you. And I needed to go because I was picking up a book for my book club's book swap. I just said books so many times. We used to do it in December, then we've kind of moved it into January. It's just less chaotic, but we do like a white elephant style book swap and we've been doing it for years. It's gotten to the point where it's like actually so difficult because we know each other's tastes really well. And also we, as a group, read a lot. So I'm always in the bookstore being like, oh my God, you know, checking Goodreads. And of course, Joy, if you're watching, she has actually read every book in existence. It's so hard to find a book Joy hasn't read. Ended up getting Mrs. Nash's Ashes. It was a hit. It got stolen a few times because here's the thing, at the end of the day, everybody just wants a little romance read. But while I was there, I like rapidly recommended books in my stories is what I called it, which is basically just me walking around the store, taking a picture and being like this one, that one, loved this one, you know. What I did here is flip out on the other side to see the books. I hindsight, I would have done this differently, but you don't need to know that. I'm just gonna pretend like this is perfect and that I wish it weren't different at all. But on the other side, <laughs> I uh, wrote down all the books that I recommended. And then I actually, because people were like, make it a highlight or whatever, and turned it into a post on my Instagram if you wanna go look at that. But I went ahead and wrote all of those down on my Barnes and Noble bag, which I thought was really fun. The next day, January 5th, I finished my Hobonichi Cousin, my 2023 Hobonichi Cousin. And I pretty much just walked around the house with it like this for a while because I was so excited and proud. And I mean, I still am. Like I have it kind of out for if anyone wants to come over and kind of thumb through it. I keep it in a place where it's very noticeable. They could just walk over and grab it. And you know what? They don't. And I want more people to do that because I'm proud of it. But I think people see that and they think, oh, there must be a lot of secrets in there. And I think I don't have secrets because I put it all on the internet. you think they'd know by now. But anyway, I just had added some selfies, added some stickers that I had been saving for like a fun occasion. This is more of my Barnes and Noble bag that I had left over. Um, and these are papers from Yellow Paper House. Next up is something so fun and sweet. My friend Catherine is pregnant with her first kid and her twin sister Liz got all of her close friends together and we contributed to a birth book. And we each all got a page or two in the book and we could do whatever we wanted. It was actually so so it's given me goosebumps to talk about it. It was so special and I'm so pleased to have been a part of it. Her and her husband's child are due in March. The flower for March is a daffodil because it stands for like new beginnings, the end of winter, like spring, and the end of like a cold, dark time. They're not having a cold, dark time for the record. I knew I wanted to do some kind of collage -y thing. So I took Bon Appetit magazines, which happen to be the only magazines we get in this house, but also they're big food people. I took these pages and did a collage of daffodils. I made like a little pocket and wrote her letter and slid it in there. I had some leftover flowers for this day. So I, I recreated a very small version of that on this day. Up next, let me unleash this sucker. If you know me, you might know that I take most of January off work because I spend pretty much every day from October to Christmas working and it's misery <laughs> and I love it, but I hate it. And um, it's hard on me mentally. Anyway, so I take most of January off and I do all the things that I've been meaning to do, which is like sleep, cook, clean out my closet for one thing. So I did like a ruthless closet clean out. And I say here, like on one hand, I'm super thankful to have cleared out so much space. But on the other hand, I'm definitely going to regret this come spring. I got rid of pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. I mean, I'm not even wearing a shirt for crying out loud because I got rid of it all, I'm just kidding. So I wanted to memorialize that in some way. So here's my little closet. And these are basically all that's left. You know, I've got a shirt here. I've got a pair of jeans. And if you look, yes, they are ripped jeans. What can I say? A sweater or two are left over and then of course a white t-shirt. I was like hyper fixated on making these tiny clothes that I <laughs> didn't quite consider how would I put these tiny clothes into my, into the day, into the page. So I just made a little closet and around here somewhere I have some waxed cord that I will eventually, I think maybe string from here to here and kind of hang them on because they are, th these can be hung. <laughs> So I do need to just put like a cord in there to actually hang these. But for now, I just keep the closet door closed with just a little bit of washi tape. 
I am a user on Bookworm Reads, which is such a fun app. Women created, women owned. My friend Amelia made it, found each other on Instagram. I'm obsessed with her, I'm obsessed with it. And I have so much fun over there. And there's so many great things about it. One, of course, it's not owned by Amazon, so that's cool. And two, I feel so free over there because the interface is so fun and like silly and like scholastic book fair, Y2K vibes that I feel so free to tell you exactly what I was thinking about. About a book and I go in on it. Just here are some of my favorites. For the seven year slip, which I loved by the way, I said, I saw a booktuber say they couldn't enjoy this book because they know too much about time travel and the physics of it. Okay, grow up and enjoy one thing. Next up, Swear on This Life by Renee someone. Literally the worst book I've ever read, but I shouldn't have shared that at book club because now I think Samantha is mad at me. Tessa Bailey book, It Happened One Summer. Tessa Girl, Calm Down is all I had to say there. And lastly, for Taylor Adams, No Exit, I am simply too hot to be as stressed out as this book has made me. And that's the truth. Amelia has sent me a bookworm bookmark in the mail. It makes me so happy. I just made a little pocket for it and I slid it in here so that way I could always know where it is. I got a manicure the next day. I, oh, look at there. I love illustrating my manicures. I love being able to remember every single manicure. And she gets to like draw on my nails and I'm just a little bit jealous. So this is me drawing on my nails. We also did book club swap this day. If you look closely, these are all the books that we swapped. I left with The Girls, no, The Guest. I say it in here, don't I? Yeah, The Guest by Emma Klein. In years past, I'm gonna tell you this, don't tell my book club this, but in years past, some of them will just be like, oh yeah, I grabbed this off my bookshelf. Like, I loved this book when I was in like fifth grade. And I'm like, cool, you just gave me something that I have to donate because I don't want this. And so we've gotten really good at like not giving each other trash. Okay. <laughs> so I, got, listen, I got some dot stickers. And am I using them too much? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, am I capable of using them tastefully? Of course. Do I occasionally get carried away? Big time, big time. So I have designated every Wednesday to be a filming day. Um, I'm really trying to go in on YouTube. It takes a shocking amount of time. I tried to film my flip through of this, my 2023 Hobonichi. My God, I got so discouraged. I mean, I think when Elaine, my girlfriend came home, I think I cried. This is me just being like, I had a tough time. Next up, our friend Kelly came over for dinner. I made this mushroom carbonara from Bon Appetit. Add bacon to it, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that. Add some bacon to it. It was so good. It was kind of just a last minute thing. She came over, I set a super cute table, lit candles that I hadn't burned ever, and I loved it. So it got put in the Hobonichi and little illustrations like this. It's my favorite thing. It's what I do. It's why I keep coming back here, I guess is what I'm saying. If you're not following Tracy on Instagram, which is the handwriting club, she is so inspiring. She does a lot of like journaling. She also works in a Hobonichi. You think I do crazy things in a Hobonichi? Tracy, you gotta see it. She's so good. She is also just like an incredible writer and she's constantly putting out these little phrases that are just making me think. Um, and sometimes cry. And this is one she put out recently. There is a past version of you that is so proud of how far you've come. I needed to have this in here. So I used my, like my Japanese brush pen and some vellum paper. Then I printed out different photos of me over the years. And my goodness, if this doesn't make me feel some things, <laughs> the fact that I'm not crying right now is insane. But I just love this. This is when I went Went home and had dinner with my family and, and my dad was being an iPad kid. I stopped at the Dollar Tree on the way into town and I got these surprise Legos. I didn't notice at the time they were $5. So I like fully spent 15 bucks on Legos for me and my nephews. It was totally worth it because I got them to sit down for a second. I mean, this is Jace, my middle nephew. He's 10, he's hilarious. He's the best in the entire world. So he was totally down, but the 16 year old, you know, I was like, he's not gonna, he's not gonna go for this, but he actually did. And then he got this cute little one. I don't remember what it was, but he then gave it to his girlfriend, which me, I'm like, I should be the only girl in your life that matters. Your weird gay aunt, yeah. I should. Anyway, totally worth the 15 bucks, even if it was like a Christmas Lego, I don't care. It was so fun. 
And then I got to do a little zine in here. These are called accordion zines or yeah, mostly. Did I lie to you just now? Pretty sure these are called accordion zines. The whole family went to dinner and it was super fun. Dad was being an iPad kid. So Jason and I had to play I Spy, Rock, Paper, Scissors. A picture of my dad with my iPhone and then me and Jace. My dad and I, I was wearing like a button up shirt and a sweater vest and he was wearing a button up shirt and a sweater vest, but I didn't really notice it until we got to the restaurant. And I just kept being like, we're dressed the same. And because it's like different colors, he's like, no, we're not. And I'm like, we're twins. And he's like, we look different. And I'm like, no, we don't. It just made me laugh. And then just a little note in here. I have this taped closed mainly because sometimes it snags on the, you know what I mean? When I'm trying to close it. I do have it taped closed, but also there is just like some other like sensitive things in there, but it was good to be home overall. And then I, of course, I used some scrap pieces of paper to make some Legos because over here was just a little bit boring. And again, y'all, I can't let those dots go. I sell these word of the year mugs, custom. You tell me what colors you want. You tell me the word that you've chosen for the year. And I like to provide as much like resources and context as I can when I do sales like this. So I shared on Instagram a template where you could put it in your stories and use the color dropper tool to like mock up what your mug would look like. And of course, mine said butts. But people had a lot of fun with those. And I was really excited. We saw Mean Girls on this day. Is that true? Let me see. I know I wrote it somewhere. Okay, yeah, we did. Okay, we saw Mean Girls um, in theaters on this day. And I mean, we have been Renee Rapp stands for quite some time and we loved it. It was so good. Obviously I was a teenager in 2004 when the first one came out. The first one was very important to me. And I liked that they just like verbatim said the lines that were so iconic and they didn't try to like do anything crazy with it. I don't think you can win like either way. If you do it verbatim, exactly how it was delivered in the first one or if you try to put a spin on it. So I was I was totally pleased. And obviously, I mean, Regina George is everything. I have listened to World Burn 157 times since probably. Think in, in my car, fully thinking I'm hitting these notes, fully thinking I'm looking, sounding, acting, being Renee Rapp. It's embarrassing to give her a spot in, in the Hobonichi for sure. At dinner with my friend Krista, her sweater was so cute. So basically I was just trying to copy her sweater pattern. And I just noticed on the Canon Ivy that you can like add cute frames to it. So I was, I was just trying that out. This is a text message that I sent to my book club explaining why I don't like historical fiction. I don't remember why it's on this page, but it, it is. Katie has asked in the chat, Amy, like, how is this book fine with you? The book is called We All Want Impossible Things. It's stunning. You absolutely have to read it. So it's sad. It's very sad, but good sad. And it's just the best. But she's saying, Amy, how are you able to love this book that's so sad, but you don't like historical fiction because you say it's too sad? And I'm saying like, I guess because she, the character in the book we were reading, she also gets to go home and eat chips and drink champagne. And in historical fiction, they have to like tie a baby to their chest and climb a mountain while also being a wartime nurse and probably their husband was killed in battle and they can't be gay or else they'll die. I want the big feelings, but also laying in bed to recover from the big feelings, basically. And I stand by that. The next day was my last day of winter break. I did all the things that I wanted to do, which was edited a video and read a ton. And I watched a lot of vlogs. I went to the gym. My girlfriend had um, a light mental breakdown where she was just sort of like shimmying around the house. And when I would say like, do you want to go to dinner? She'd go, no. Or do you want to watch TV? No. So it was just like, just maybe having like a little moment. That Friday I went back to work. Zero out of 10, do not recommend it. I was really, really struggling getting my video uploaded uploaded to YouTube that flipped through because it was Marvel movie big. It was giant. I didn't realize because I'm dumb, but so pretty that, you know, sizes of things are occasionally prohibitive. And I had to basically go in and like render it more small. God, I'm a genius. But then we, that night we saw Eric Whitaker at the Rialto, which is um, the Georgia State Theater in Atlanta. Eric Whitaker is my girlfriend's, one of one of her favorite composers. Um, and it was actually incredible to like see him in action. He had the orchestra there and then he had the choir and then he, they also did like a mass choir. So there were people sitting in the seats with the music and for the last song, he turned around and faced the crowd. I, I am getting chill bumps talking about this. He turned around and faced the crowd and conducted the mass choir so you're sitting in the crowd surrounded by people singing and my god it was incredible so 
I had some feelings I needed to get out over here, covered these feelings. Typically what I do is I turn this book upside down and I write upside down, but this time I went sideways. My friend Natasha, Natasha in your phone, did a reel about these flowers that she likes to do. So I did my version of them. And then my friend Catherine, who we were just talking about, had her baby shower. We presented her with her birth book. She cried, I cried, everybody cried. It was beautiful, so beautiful. And it's, it's so special to watch people that you've known for such a long time. I met these girls when I moved to Atlanta for college. I've known them for 15 years. It's so special to watch people you love grow into who they're supposed to be and in the best versions of themselves and, and be happy and work through challenges and discover new things. And it's, I love it. After the baby shower, I drove to Charleston, South Carolina for a conference I was teaching at. I do like to do these kind of like big spreads when I have conferences like that. So this is day one and day two. Highlights here, you know, I like to illustrate the classes that we do. This was my class, it was pretty cute. Um, highlight is that I rode a mechanical bull. I made it 13 seconds. They're slipperier than you think. And the jerking, is really what gets you. You just need to be squeezing your thighs so much tighter than you would imagine. So that's my tip. But I got to see my work wife here. We did an improv show, which was actually pretty fun. I was nervous. Live things like that, they could go so poorly. It was actually really fun. And then these events can be so exhausting because I'm a person that goes and teaches, but I'm talking to a lot of people and, and you're on for like 12 hours a day. And often I go back to my hotel room and I'm just like staring at the wall because I have just extroverted so much. So anyway, I ended the conference by going to dinner with people that I really love and like can be in a bad mood around. It was just so nice to decompress. And also I had a stunning martini, just a gorgeous dirty gin martini. Highly recommend Felix in Charleston if you're, if you're there. This was my road trip home. On the way out, I went to a bakery and like an old house. It's called Welton's Tiny Bake Shop. It is tiny, but my God, the olive oil cake. I listened to World Burn a hundred times. I got food to go. Couldn't stop listening to like old emo songs from 2004 from when I was in high school. Took a huge nap when I got home. We went to our date night and had wings and beer, too many drinks probably, and went to bed. Next day I had to go back to work. That was tough, but I'm working on these word of the year mugs and they are looking so good. It's sort of shocking sometimes to be like, did I make that? And I, it's kind of how I was feeling about these, which I was super proud of. Um, they're going really slow, but they're looking really good. And then I went to the gym and I talk about the one minute squat holds here and just how I love them. And I want to do them every day. Is that weird? This is kind of one of my favorite spreads or layouts or whatever you want to call them where I'm just giving you letters and I'm giving you like the most basic drawing in the world in minimal color. So I had a lot of fun with that. The next day we ordered Indian food. So hot, it hurts my feelings. That's kind of like, by the way, I said that before Caroline Polachek said that. So I should let that go, but I can't. We get chicken tikka masala, tarka dal, pashwari naan, and we get the chicken tikka masala super hot and the, the tarka dal just hot because sometimes we used to get both super hot. One time it caused an emotional breakdown. I'm weeping. Elaine is like running around the apartment. Like it, so we have to kind of rein it back sometimes, <laughs> but we will not stop ordering no matter what. So good. The next day, my friend Olivia, Bold August Designs, by the way, she's on YouTube. She has a lot of Canva tips and design tips, but she's an incredible designer. She's done all of my stuff. We've actually got some really cute merch coming that's like book and Hobonichi related. She has started a book club and we went over to her house and the spread was insane. She gave us like all these little bits and bobs, which is crazy. You, I think when you've been in a book club for like almost a decade and you know everyone so well, and sometimes you, the host is so busy, we just have frozen pizza and bag of salads. It's really funny to go over to a first time book club host's house. Cause it's like, oh yeah, we don't do that anymore. But it was super fun. And she gave us, she made us, because she's an incredible designer, she made us these library card bookmarks. And the book that got chosen was Vampires of El Norte by Isabella Canas, Canas. It is a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but so far I'm really enjoying it. We also played book club bingo. Me and my friend Brittany were able to, to win first. We got first bingo at the same time. And what clinched it for me is read something spicy in public. 
and everybody was like, what? It's a lot of people I don't know. And they're like, how, what do you mean? How are you doing that? And I'm like, oh, on my Kindle every day. The amount of monster smut I have read lately, hilarious. And I'm loving it. So if you have any recommendations <laughs> for monster romances, I'm all yours. I'm not in too deep yet, but I'm having fun. So the next day I had had a bit of a melancholy night. Sometimes that happens, I think, when like the weekend ends and I don't feel like I did anything groundbreaking. I never do anything groundbreaking. But anyway, the weekend ended. I had a little bit of a melancholy feeling. Definitely took it out on the lane. We sort of fought the next day. I couldn't stop listening to, again, all of the music I listened to when I was in high school. A lot of just like emo trash. It's not trash, it's fantastic. But I was like plummeted into that headspace of just being like 14, 15, like no one gets me, no one understands me. And I had the best time. I'm like cosplaying an angsty teenager. It was the best. I mean, I'm still an angsty teenager, but anyway. So I had to, oh, this isn't done. Oh, that's okay. So I had to obviously put it in the Hovenichi. So what I did is I made a mix CD and a CD case because that's how I was listening to all that stuff back then. We were ripping it off of LimeWire, Napster, like all the illegal places and burning it onto CDs. And I spent a lot of time decorating the CD and the insert for the CD case. So I had to put the playlist in here. I have made a Spotify playlist that is more songs and I have a QR code that I'm gonna print out at work if I ever remember and put it in here so that I can scan it and listen to it whenever I want. I will link that over to you so that you can listen to it and pretend that you are in 2004 and just being angsty, angsty, angst. But this was, yeah, this is like so stupid. And this is where I shine is being stupid. And I just love every single thing about this. We saw all of us strangers the next night at a super old theater in Atlanta called the Terra. It was closed for some time, but they've opened it back up. And I just, I forgot how huge that theater is. There's only, I think four screens in it. And the actual screening rooms are giant. And there are a million seats in there. And it was just us and another couple. And it just felt like we were on the moon watching a movie together. And we did not know it was gonna be that sad. So I'm crying into my snow caps, but it was worth it. I really enjoyed it. It. I so miss, speaking of 2004, I so miss the like actual movie tickets. Like I give me those back. I want to put them in here. And for whatever reason this month, I could not get Sutton Strat from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I could not get her last season or the season before out of my head telling Crystal Minkoff, jealous, jealous of what? Your ugly leather pants. <laughs> that was incredible, by the way. I can't, I can't stop saying it. I cannot stop saying it. So obviously I had to put it in here. This is what happens when I don't sketch the letters out first. I run out of space and I have to stack pants at the end. And I was so bummed about it. Like, why is leather this big? It has no reason to be this big, but it just happened like that. You gotta love Sutton. And that is all so far. Did that just end? I don't know. So that's it. That's January so far. I am having a lot of fun. I am definitely taping in more things than I was in this one. Of course I started taping in things later, but I didn't really do that early on. So I'm interested to see the size that this one is gonna get. I'm also trying to find, you may have noticed, so I'm doing a lot of these double things and I'm really enjoying it, but later on, a little bit of a spoiler alert, I'm getting into like the triple of it all, and I'm wondering if there's a better way to do that. My challenge for back journaling February, because spoiler alert, it's February 21st, and I have not, I've not done many things in February. I will be doing a lot of back journaling this weekend. Wanna experiment with like tape-ins that are not just in the spine like that, and that don't prohibit like turning the page that much, cause I run into that occasionally, but. Anyway, that's January. <laughs> I want to know if you enjoyed it first and foremost and and maybe what you're loving in here. And I want to know like if you're caught up in yours. <laughs> Basically just make me feel better for being so behind. Thank you for watching. Uh, sorry this was so late. I mean, this is going on the internet, so you could be watching this 8 years from now. That's frightening. Um and you have and it could be December and it's actually quite early because January hasn't happened yet.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the kind words on the last few videos I've done. It means so much. I had a great time hanging out with you today and I look forward to doing it again soon. Bye.